Now we're on page 95, and this is exercise uh, 21. And at a glance, we have what appears to be uh, a slow heart rate. And uh, the rate is, in fact, somewhere around 18 to 20, uh, you might argue slightly 20 uh, beats per minute. If we were to map it out to uh, measure it, um, this QRS falls fairly close to a dark line, so that's uh, 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, 43, 37, 33, 30, 27, 25, you know, maybe even slightly more than 25. Um, the other thing you can do, I know I, we didn't get past 33, but you can count the number of dark lines uh, between the QRSs and divide it into 300, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So um, 300 divided by 12 approximately gives you about 25. So yeah, you could say 25 in there. Somewhere in there. It's pretty low. Um, very low, right? Um, P waves are definitely present, uh, but there doesn't appear to be any consistent peer interval. This is definitely not the same as this. This, this is definitely not the same as that, and that's a bit of a concern. And so, you know, it begs the question, are the P waves even connected to the QRS complexes? That's the big question. And we have a wide QRS, so it's, the QRS is about 0.12 second. And given the fact that there's no consistent PR interval, we have a wide QRS, that certainly begs the question, are these P waves disassociated from the QRSs? Is there atrioventricular dissociation? Well, the ratio is not applicable, and the rhythm is, rhythm is regular, which suggests that this Y QRS is coming from a single focus, um, given that it's regular. And if you were to map that out with a piece of paper, you'd see that it's regular. And the interpretation, uh, again, just um, if we suspect that the P waves are disassociated from the QRSs, in other words, that there's AV dissociation, then we should map them out. And more importantly, uh, is not the fact that they're, um, whether equidistant or not, is if you look across this ECG, is there anywhere where the P waves alter the QRS T wave morphology? And we see that here. We see that uh, definitely here as well, and possibly here. We're not entirely sure, but clearly there is no association between P wave activity and QRS complexes. So there's AV dissociation, and um, the heart rate is consistent with AV dissociation. The Y QRS is consistent with AV dissociation. And when you have AV dissociation and a slow rhythm like this, we have a third degree AV block with a heart rate of between 18 and 20, and you know perhaps 25. Um, you know, I may not have calculated that accurately, but uh, in the low 20s in, in any case. So this is a third degree AV block with a heart rate of approximately uh, 20 